Welcome back to, I don't know how you would pronounce that, to recap. Exoskeleton they need to shed to grow. Segmented body consolidated into the head, thorax with three legs and abdomen. Compound eyes, antennae, mandibles, maxillae, labium. Two cirrhi, these wacky sensory organs. Females have a tube at the end that they can lay their eggs through. Wings, sometimes they have ocelli, which are like eyes, but worse. Do you hear the flippity jibbity jibber jabber? Psokos means worn down. Originally it was paired with Ptera for eroded wings, but now it's on its own because they added Theroptera, which do not have wings. You might see a lot of reference to these two, which is weird because Psocoptera does not technically exist. Before we had DNA evidence, this sort of thing would happen a lot. Oh, these are over here and those are over there. The tree must look like this. What? They're flat and their cirsi are finally gone. Psychodians are poorly studied except for one which is the head louse, so to speak. Louse nymphs, or at least those of the head lice, are just smaller adults. Now, up to this point, the mouth parts have been chewing mouth parts, meaning they work pretty much like this. Max Li grab the thing, hold it up against the labium, mandibles. Bob's your uncle. But lice need a new mouth to drink blood. This is the piercing and sucking mouth type. The maxillae and mandibles jab through the skin, or bark, and the labium contains grooves to suck the blood out. You'll see more interesting mouth shapes. Thysano means fringed, and the fringed wings of a thrips are very interesting. The actual wing is compressed down to a central filament, and a bunch of tassels, or fringes, emerge to make it look like a normal wing. They also have a piercing sucking mouth type, but they're missing a right mandible, so they use the left side to scrape up against the leaf and then suck. Rasping is the technical term for this scraping. They also have a weird and unique life cycle. Egg, as usual, and then larva 1 and larva 2. Now, I don't know why we feel the need to refer to these as unique life stages. These are really just instars of the same stage, that is to say, a period of time in between each ectasis. These have no wings. Then the pupil stages, prepupa and pupa, which again are just different forms of the same stage. Neither of the pupil stages feed and they have wings but no fringes. The pupil stage will remain for later. Now it's time for the realest bugs there are. The Hemiptera means half wings, which is actually kind of confusing. You've seen front wings get hardened into elytra often enough, so you'd expect true bugs to only have half the wings, but it's actually that the wings are half hard, so really they have three quarters of the wings in total. Ah well. Some of them have ocelli, but all hemipterans have the same piercing, sucking mouth, and like the other half of the tree, they just sort of shed their skin one day and emerge as an adult with wings. Alright, I've teased you with it long enough. It's time for... Hymen means membrane, and the membrane wings are very thin or absent. Now, there are two groups of hymenoptera, symphyta and apocrita. These actually have the same thing going on as psychoptera and theroptera, but it makes sense to group them like this if we're going purely on morphology. The symphyta have membrane wings, a biting mouth, and their ovipositor is hardened. This is what lets them, you know, you know, inject them into another living creature. Now, Hymenoptera is where the four-staged life cycle really kicks off. Their larval stage is a white caterpillary creature with a bunch of fake legs or pro legs. The dormant pupil stage is sealed off with a papery material because now we have something crazy, the exorate pupa. So normally when you grow, the things grow out of you. Obviously. In an exorate pupa, they grow first and then get attached afterwards. They remain dormant until completion and emerge a full, legal, ad why would you put that word there? Apocrita has more of the characteristics we associate with Hymenoptera. She has a snatched weight. <clears throat> the first two segments of the abdomen are constricted. That's the most important synapomorphy, and it's what both of their names are referencing. They also have a distinctive mouth. All Hymenoptera retain the grooved labium, but the Apocrita, which feed on nectar, repurpose the maxillae back to piercing, creating a hybrid we call the lapping mouth parts. Eusociality, which I covered better in this video section on haplodiploidy is not common to all apocrita, it just sort of crops up randomly, but that's because haplodiploidy, which is one of the prereqs, is common to all hymenoptera. Let's please just change the topic to Raphida means needle. The wings of a snake fly are fully clear and covered in a network of veins. The neck is long and the ovipositor is really long, and that's where the needle comes from. Their two wings are the same again and they extend past the body. The snake flies have more active larvae and are back to obtech pupae, without the need for a chrysalis. And they're back to chewing mouth parts along with 
I shouldn't have to identify what megalo means, and I certainly shouldn't have to explain the name. Just look at this Dobson fly. Their wings are so big they need to be folded up. And good glory, look at those mandibles! Like the snake fly, they have a lot of veins in their wings. The larval stages are a lot more well studied. They have really leggy pro legs. They have ocelli, and they are always fully aquatic. The pupae are terrestrial and active. We definitely focus on the larvae of creatures like Nevro, you might think means brain, but that's a formation from neuron. Neuron was originally named after being a cord or sinew, so just like the Plecoptera, this is in reference to the complex vein patterns on the wings. The English name lacewing is even more on the nose. They also go by the name antlion in reference to the larval stage with huge mandibles. Despite the massive difference, they don't even need a pupil stage to transition, but we'll be back to the x-ray pupa when we move over to Coleos means sheath, because up until now, bugs have been uncertain about those elytra. Some of them aren't fully willing to give up the front wings. Not the beetles. The beetles have fully hardened elytra, and some of them even cut down on the back wings. A beetle's larval stage is called a grub, which, like bees, is very unlike the adult stage, and they need an extra pupa to make up the difference. But while bees have their friends to protect them, the beetles need to spin their own protective cocoon. Well, I say spin, but it's made of dirt. Now from the most well-known we go to... Strepsis means twisted because the hind wings are twisted when at rest. The forewings as well as the mouthpieces have been reduced to sensory organs. In their larval stage they burrow into the organs of other bugs, mostly these four. They complete a pupil stage when in there and then the males, who emerge when mature, have fan-shaped antennae and their eyes are more like regular eyes than compound eyes. The females never exit a host once they enter, which means they have no wings, antennae, or even legs. It also means the males just have to find them. I guess by burrowing into random insects until they get lucky. Yeah, the Strepsipterans are really unlike any other insect. Well, actually there is another insect that reduces its wings to sensory organs, uh, leaving only one pair of wings, hence the name Two Wings. However, in Strepsiptera, it's the four wings that have been reduced to halteers, while in flies, it's the back wing. These halteers give it really good gyroscopic senses, which is why it's so hard to hit a mosquito in the air. However, that does mean they only have one pair of wings, so they're more vulnerable to dedicated air predators like dragonflies and bats. Most flies have piercing sucking mouth parts, but some have sponging mouth parts. The labium and maxillae are combined into a proboscis, which allows the grooves on the labium to be turned into a straw-like structure. The mandibles may or may not be present. The eyes are very large, and they too have a worm-like larval stage, what we call maggots. Instead of spinning a cocoon, flies just sit in their old skin while they cook, technically making them coarctate instead of exorate. Mosquitoes suck, but you know what else sucks? No, not my mom. I don't even watch the regular show. Siphon, believe it or not, means siphon, and aptera is without wings. Fleas do not have wings, and they also have a nice, fat, piercing, sucking mouth. Like grasshoppers, they have long back legs for jumping, and they also have claws and bristles on their legs to climb. They do have two ocelli. Unfortunately, they have zero compound eyes. Their antennae are shrunken and recessed into the head, also their bodies are really squished up, if that wasn't obvious. The larvae have no ocelli either, or legs, and they spin an exorate cocoon. Mechos means long, and yeah, scorpion flies do have some pretty long wings. They also have these soft and gentle pleading eyes. But more importantly, their face elongates down to the chewing mouth parts. They have all four life stages, a larvae with six legs and occasionally some fake legs, and a cocoon they have to spin where they're formed exorately. They're pretty much the default insect on this side of the tree. Oh, right, the tail. So that only occurs in males. That's the bulge and that's the shaft, or shaft, it's called a hemipenis. Scorpion flies also do this cool thing where they steal prey from active spider webs. It's awesome. Friendship ended with dragonflies, scorpion flies are my new favorite insect. Trichos means hairy. Hairy wings. The wings of a caddisfly are covered in fine hair, as is most of their body. Their mouthpieces are reduced because, like the mayflies, the adult stage is kind of just for mating and then dying. If you can believe it, the larvae are also covered in hair, but they have well-developed chewing mouth parts. The larval and pupal stages occur underwater. Caddisfly larvae also like to cover themselves in stuff, much like a bagworm, which they sometimes use for most of the cocoon, but of course the real bagworms are... Lepidosis. Hey, get out of the caption! Ugh. 
Anyways, it means scaly, and the Lepidopterans do have scaly wings. The scales are essentially very wide hairs, and they're what give the butterfly their distinctive, beautiful colorations and complex patterns. Lepidopterans also have their own distinctive mouth parts, the siphoning type, to drink nectar. Like the piercing sucking, they have a proboscis, but this isn't the labium, these are the maxillae. The labium is up here, and it's more or less turned into a tongue that lets them smell and taste. The mandibles are long gone. Lepidoptera have two ocelli, and their antennae are weird. The butterflies end in a bowl, the female moths are normal, and the male moths have a bunch of little hairs sticking out of them. Hence the names club antenna or different antenna between males and females. The larval stage is famous. They have six real legs and a couple of fake legs. The pupil stages are equally famous with the romantic name chrysalis. And they emerge ready to lay more eggs and complete the cycle. So smash that like button if you want a wasp girl to come.